Hi, this is Dr. Chet Rehal. Today my guest is Dr. Amir Lerman, who's a Vice Chair for Cardiovascular Research in our Division of Cardiology. Amongst Amir's many interests has been the pathogenesis of acute coronary syndromes. And Amir, good morning. Good morning, Chet. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. Listen, Amir, tell us about the pathogenesis of, of ACS, um, particularly this concept of the vulnerable plaque. So the concept of the vulnerable plaque came from uh, observation that we have, not only us, but other people, that uh, most of the patients that present with acute coronary syndrome actually do not have uh, significant obstructive coronary disease. They draw our attention more on the uh, structure of the plaque rather than the amount of the plaque. And we learn a lot from pathology, from the studies by Renu Vermani, who taught us a lot from autopsy, that apparently the acute coronary syndrome is actually a result from abnormalities in the plaque structure and the constitute of the plaque, and mainly the large necrotic core, the thin uh, cap, fibroateroma, and a lot of constitute in the plaque from inflammation, uh, blood vessel, neurovascularization, that at some point have a plaque eruption and creating of thrombus leading to the acute coronary syndrome. So what you're saying is that mild plaques can be so-called vulnerable under certain conditions. Now, can these vulnerable plaques be detected in vivo, or is this just an autopsy phenomenon? No. So that's, that's a very good question. Uh, the, the plaque can be detected in vivo with more sophisticated and novel imaging modality, such as uh, intravascular ultrasound with uh, uh, additional or virtual histology component, uh, with new images such as OCT and lipid scan, we can essentially uh, detect the, uh, the histology, close to histology of the plaque, determine if this plaque has a lot of necrotic core, a lot of uh, lipid volume. We can measure the thickness of the fibroteroma or the shoulders that covering the plaque. And in the future, we'll probably be able also to look at the amount of neovascularization that may lead to plaque hemorrhage in acute coronary syndrome. You were heavily involved in the PROSPECT study. Can you, can you give us a brief synopsis of that and tell us how it should change our practice, if so. So the prospect study, just briefly, was a, was a, a prospective uh, study on about 700 patients that uh, uh, we looked uh, with the direction of uh, uh, Greg Stone, who was the principal investigator, on the natural history of uh, vulnerable plaque as detected by virtual histology over three years. And, and what was found out that about 20% uh, uh, of the patients have event when the interesting part is half of them, almost 11 to 12 percent, have event non in the carpet lesion that underwent the PCI. Uh, indicating again that, uh, and when they look at data meta analysis, the presence of necrotic core was one of the major components that was leading to cardiovascular event. However, uh, in the study, which was relatively small, if you look in an event, the majority of the event were not actually. Uh, acute coronary syndrome was under death, the majority of the event were actually leading to progression of a disease over time at the site where you have necrotic, necrotic core and more plug volume and less lumen. So I think that it taught us a lot that the coronary artery is a hot heterogeneous component. It's a dynamic process. Uh, some necrotic core can undergo healing. Some uh, area without healing can undergo a rupture. And we are still in the phase of learning that that taught us a lot that we need to look not only at the lumen and the degree of stenosis, but rather to be in depth of disease, atherosclerosis is the disease of the vascular wall, not of the lumen, um, and look, be, learn how to uh, look at the pathogenesis of the disease that leading to acute coronary syndrome. So Amir, can these vulnerable plaques be detected in vivo or are these just autopsy phenomena? Excellent question. Uh, we have now currently more advanced and sophisticated intravascular imaging modality that allow us to look at the uh, structure of the plaque, including a, a, a ultrasound with virtual histology, including OCT that can tell us uh, in exact not only the constitution of the plaque, but can allow us to actually measure the thickness of the cap. And our new modality is using spectroscopy to look at the con content of the lipid content of the plaque. One of the neat things you've done, Amir, is you've developed a movie that illustrates really nicely this concept of the vulnerable plaque and the events that lead uh, to plaque rup to, to the rupture and then the occlusion of the vessel. We're going to make this video available to our audience members. Uh, it can be downloaded right underneath this video segment. Tell us what this movie shows. So this movie was actually uh, uh, was done by uh, putting together multiple histology slides from autopsies 
creating the concept of the plaque that is growing, creating a positive remodeling, and not obstructing the lumen, creating a mild obstruction of the lumen, about 40%. Uh, the lipotic core is increasing, the cap becomes thinner, and at some point at the shoulder of the plaque there is a rupture, uh, create, exposing the circulation to thrombogenic surface and creating an occlusive thrombus. Why does the shoulder rupture? Why does it occur at the shoulder? Uh, the, the concept uh, the shoulder's rupture for, first of all, there's the physical, uh, uh, f physical instability there, but also we f they found out that there was a lot of inflammation, macrophages, and, uh, and we that created a lot of uh, weakness of the tissue, mainly at the shoulder. My guest today has been Dr. Amir Lerman, who's the Vice Chair for Cardiovascular Research here at Mayo Clinic. He talked to us today about the pathogenesis of acute coronary syndromes, specifically as it relates to the role of the vulnerable plaque. And he has put together a wonderful movie that I'm sure uh, you will find interesting. You're free to download it and use it in your presentations if it'll be useful. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Amir. Thanks for having me.